Welcome back to Gig Harbor Paddling. Today, we're working on canoe video review. As we're looking at these videos, I'm looking for a few different things. Uh, we just did a 14 case. So we've had a long paddle, and in those long paddles, I saw a lot of dragging hips. I'm looking for straight arms, and I'm looking for paddling that's out of your comfort zone. Already, I'm noticing that he's trying to reach out. He's trying to return that hip. You'll see a lot of people when they hit that water, right, especially when we go to some younger video, right, that that would be bent right there. So yeah, both arms are really straight. A lot of power, and then we're, we're bending that bottom arm as we return. I'm noticing that we're, we're bending the top arm to get stacked. So this is a thing I see all of the canoeists in the room doing, which is when you guys want to get stacked, what happens is you exit, right? All good. Sometimes you guys bend at the exit too. But let's say we're, we're exiting and then we're straight, okay? And then what happens is we're going out to reach, and we go stacked hands, stacked hands, stacked hands. And we bring this hand over to stack it with the bottom, right? And we go, ah, yes, stacked hands. But now we have that bent top arm pushing down, right? And then we think, OK, well, let's straighten the arm. And then we start paddling like this, right, where our hands aren't stacked, right? So the way we get stacked hands while not bending this top arm is by rotating the chest under. Notice how now. My hand, which is really tight here, right, already, like, my chest is kind of hurting because I'm squeezing in, right? So look how much easier it would be if I simply, like, rotated under, right? And so what I want you guys to practice is the idea of keeping your arm at your shoulders and then rotating under it and letting your hand come up. Because that motion there is how we should be exiting, right, and then returning into our setup. And then notice that as my hands get stacked, my shoulders get stacked, too. So instead of hitting my shoulders down into the water, right, I've stacked my shoulders, and now I'm coming in here. And that's a way easier position to get out of, too. Because what I notice is with Aaron, and I see this in you too, Carter, is that as we reach down, right, our shoulders kind of come straight down, and then we get really low, right? And then we have to pull ourselves all the way up. Whereas if we stack these shoulders a little bit more, we'd be a little taller and I think it'd be a little easier to get out of. That one was a little bit better. Right, where we stack, we bury the blade, and then we pull up. Exiting with that top arm straight, I think it'll be better to see in the back view what your back arm is doing. So here's the back view, and now we can see that arm in the full glory. It's coming out and it's bending, so we get that stacked arm. So as we're exiting, and there he is in solution, right? It's Fairly straight coming into the stroke, right? But notice, we're not quite stacked. And if we wanted to be stacked and bring this arm over, our head's in the way. So all we'd have to do is moving this over more, right? Whereas if we just rotated this side of the chest through a little bit more, right? Get that shoulder to knee, like how Ryan was talking about last week, we're able to open up area for our arm to straighten without bending. It's gonna be safer for our shoulders, it's gonna be safer for, it's gonna be stronger for the boat, right? So notice as we exit here, instead of our chest rotating under our arm and our arm going out, we're bending that arm. I like watching C2s compared to C1s because you get to see what happens when you're kind of uncomfy. Because um, no one's as comfortable in a C2 as they are in their single. I'm watching if you're Xing together and what your top arms are doing, right? So see that top arm? At the exit, we're going really far back and we're bending out, right? And our chest is staying pretty parallel to the water. So as you come down, both shoulders are hitting the water at the same time. There we go, I'm just zooming in because I know I'm too far, right? Um, Henry is doing it still a little bit. I wish I had more of a back view, right? But. Aaron, I'm mostly watching how bent your arm is. And he's a little better, because when he exits, his chest comes around a little bit more. Some paddlers that are younger, what they're gonna do is they're gonna put that paddle in the water, and instead of press up off of it, what they're gonna do is they're just gonna sink down so much that they can't get up. And you'll just see them paddle really bent over, right, trying to get back up. Rue has great posture, right? She's sitting up very tall. She rotates. So that's kinda cool, you've been working on that. 
Um, where is she rotating? What is she rotating? Her chest is rotated. Yeah, her chest is rotating. Um, I think in our setup, right here, come on, right? I can see that your chest is rotated to me. If you had a little sign on your PFD, I'd be able to read it, which I like. I see that our hip isn't positive. I like this A-frame. I think we could probably rotate that uh, hip a little bit more, right? Um, I think that paddle could go closer to the, where the O is in Nello, right? Um, other than that, I think you've been working on hip rotation. I think it's getting better. Um, and then we're going to have to work at the back half of the stroke here. So as we're pulling, right, that hip is supposed to be coming back, comes back a little bit, and then we'd like it to return, right? Because a stroke isn't just moving your hip forward and then back. It's about moving your hip in a way that propels the boat, right? So the first part of the stroke is that hip driving the paddle back, and then we're going to hit neutral. And when we hit neutral, what happens is that we got to exit. So once we hit that neutral right by the thigh, we want to get right out, okay? So we're pulling that hip back, and you have nowhere else to go, so we're just going negative. What I want to see us do is pull it back and then return it forward, right? That's going to help the flow of the boat move a little bit more consistently. It's going to help you go speedy. Like right here, we should be thinking about rotating that hip back forward and, and returning, right? Because we're dragging a little too far back. So here's neutral, right? And then we want to be out before here. Right, because this is negative. You see how I'm talking about that? I'm using terms, but this is positive, right? This is neutral, that would be negative. Right, so as we stroke, we want to stay positive to neutral, and then we want to get out. Right, anything negative is just drag. I think this is pretty indicative of how you paddle when I'm not watching. So <laughs> I think it's worth looking at what we do when we're easy paddling. I think this was a long day. I think we were doing 2Ks. Was that what we were doing that day? Something long. That was a 2K day. So I think this was the second 2K in, right? But I think this is how a lot of you guys paddle when you think that we're not watching you guys. So <laughs> I think it's really important to see that we're shortening the stroke by a lot, right? Um, an old thing that has been brought up again that I was co uh, coached by, uh, was Coach Joe, um, I think who said it first, who talked about the comfort bubble, right? Where there's this like aura around you right here where we are most comfortable sitting. Like all of you now have paddled long enough to be semi-comfortable just like sitting and bracing in the boat. Even Bob, right, has mentioned that he has a little bu bu bubble of comfort, right, where he can brace and he can stay up in for quite a while, right? Hopefully your guys' comfort bubble is a little larger where you can take a couple strokes without feeling like you get a purge, right? Um, but the problem is, is this little comfort bubble is not very fast. We'll notice that as we enter, please stay with me, there you go. As we enter, right, we're not reaching out very far, right? We're reaching out, mm, there, there's where we're maybe fully buried and then we're coming out real negative, right? So when I look at how much usable stroke we have, I'm seeing, okay, we're reaching out, that looks okay. We're hitting our setup, we're fully buried by neutral, and then we're exiting really negative, right? So the majority of our stroke is in this back half here, rather than this front half here that we really want, right? And I think a lot of you do this because you're tired. You don't want to keep going, and so you start arm paddling your way. And the problem with that is, is most of your stroke is drag. And especially if we're doing, let's say, 2Ks, or like yesterday, we're doing a 14K, right, for most of you, okay, that arm paddling is not only going to be bad technique, it's going to make you slower, it's going to make you drag. So all the energy that you're putting into that stroke is going to be wasted at the back half. Look at, I'm going to let the video run, look at the flow of the boat. It surges, and then we kind of stop and lull, and it surges and stops and lulls, right? We want that to be shooting out of the water and then staying up on that plane, okay? And that's what makes 14K fly by, right? But this paddling, the paddling that I saw from all of you yesterday, brings it really slow. So we want to be staying positive, returning, and getting that long stroke ahead. So here's a C2. They were doing a finish for their 2K, I believe. I was shooting them on, so my camera's really wobbly because I was not looking at my camera. 
Um, so this is their finish. They were wiped out. I had like three good videos of them, right, as they were finishing. The first thing I noticed about this, before I go into the technique and what we were feeling like, is look at the drive of this finish after such a long paddle, right? This is how we want to finish, with explosion and heart and passion, right? And so Ashley, Johanna, you guys are, are really good at that. Johanna's not here, but Ashley, you're very good at that. Um, the second thing I noticed about this video is how the boat dives, right? And I feel bad for Johanna because I'm going to pick on her a little bit because I think it's mostly her fault. Um, <laughs> because if I'm looking at you guys' knees, right, I'm seeing more forward, the boat's on that plane, and then the moment that we start to drive back, what happens in just a moment is Johanna's going to push her foot down instead of back, and the boat's going to splash down. Whoop! Beautiful. So now we've really dug into the water here, and the most powerful part of your stroke is going to be spent with a lot of drag. Uh, Coach Ryan was talking about, you know, the, the different equations for how much drag, and I'm not a math gal. I know that's more drag than before. I want it tall. I want it not in the water, right? And so what would help with that is minimizing that knee a little bit, especially Johanna. Um, sorry, Johanna. Um, minimizing that knee to here. This would be the farthest I'd go back, where your knee is actually. Good job on your knee. Um, but see how we're almost straightening it out every stroke. And then we're coming forward and we're plunging that knee down again. Right? So if we let the video play, look at, how, like, you guys aren't big girls. You're swamping that boat. Right? So we need to be really careful for everyone on what that knee is doing when we're driving. Oh, and there's the shoot. Yeah. But we need to be really careful about what this knee is doing as we do our knee drive. Because we've talked a lot about how important knee drive is and to be pushing with that front knee. But this is when it becomes a problem is when we're not pushing back with the knee, but we're stomping down. And we're letting the chest stomp down. And now suddenly, we're, we're swamping our boat. There's a lot of hip movement. They're pretty synced up, which is cool, especially going this fast, being this tired. You see some C2s kind of fall apart, right? So they're keeping themselves together a good bit. I also like the pacing that even though they're coming fast, there's a moment where they're all together as they return together. So I like that. So we're seeing that, I'm looking at the top arm right now, and I'm seeing that it's bending in the same way that all of yours guys' does, trying to get stacked and then bending, right? I'm also seeing the bottom arm is coming in, right? And so now we're starting to use that tricep as we fall onto the blade. Um, the last thing I want to see out of the C2 is just more reach. I know we're trying to do a finish. This is what an, a lot of you guys do as well. But as we finish, we'll see how short their stroke really is. We see a lot of hip reach, right? Or a lot of hip movement, right? So here's our setup. Oops, they're so fast. Here we go. So their setup is okay, but then by the time we're buried, we're, we're kind of neutral here. You see that? And so, again, as we're doing a sprint, it's important to remember to exit earlier instead of enter later, right? Because we want those strokes to be quick and out of the water. And so the tendency is, is to just stay really close to your body, but then it's all neutral to negative. So we want to make sure that when we're doing our sprints and you're thinking of staying forward, be pushing yourself to stay up in front of your foot instead of behind. I like to think that there's like a, a, a trampoline wall behind my butt, and anytime my butt comes too far back, it pushes it forward, right? Because I never want to be at the point where uh, my chest is low and my, I'm, I'm like sitting on my back calf, and then I have to come all the way forward again, right? Because then that's going to be worse on the bouncing, right? We saw the boat surge, right? It's because we're so far back, then coming so far forward, in a quick amount of time, you're going to see the seesaw of the boat. It's hard to see because I was a little behind the boat, but this is our finish line, right? And we can see that you were you threw that pretty perfect. So that was that was pretty cool. I think that was probably the one of the best boat throws we had that day. So that was pretty cool. Um, and throwing a boat in a C2 is hard. So when I was talking about like that butt should never go behind the knee, that's true, right? Especially in these long pieces, I'm okay with the butt coming back a little bit farther. Right? Whereas, you know, if Ashley and Johanna in their sprint, I definitely want to keep that knee really tight, right? But in a, in a long sprint, right, I'm okay if it comes back a little farther. Um, 
this is on the the brink of maybe too far, but I think it's fine. <laughs> I think this would be the farthest back I would let it go. I think I would stop an inch before it gets there. But yes, it's not that bad. All right, here's our reach. All right, we're reaching for it. And you're a long guy, Connor. I know we can reach longer. And what happens when we're tired is we like to stay in that comfortable bubble, right? This is your comfortable bubble, right? And you're good at reaching to here. This is very comfortable for you, right? You just straighten your arms and you have my entire reach that's possible, right? So you're lucky in that way, but you are able to reach all the way out here. But we have to be able to squeeze that hip in to that front knee and let that chest stack the shoulders and let it fall. Top arm should be straight. It's kind of the, the motto of the day. And just use our hip more, right? This is, this is paddling that's comfortable. I want to be uncomfortable. I really like how as our hip comes forward, Bowen, right? Here's our, our hip all the way forward. Okay, and then as we hit the water there, right? We're not disengaging that hip. A lot of you guys, what happens is as you try and bury the blade, you pop this hip way back, right? But what Bowen does is he lets his chest kind of sink down into that lunge, right? And so as he paddles, right, that hip stays pretty forward. Um, so the biggest thing I'm seeing is in the back of the stroke, where we're letting that arm drop a lot and we're letting that hip stay back for too long. Right, so this is pretty classic of someone who's paddled a year, maybe less, which is, uh, or maybe a little bit more, is the front half of the stroke looks really good. Right, we learn how to reach, we learn how to pull back, but then we get stuck back here. And so it becomes this one stroke where it's beginning, end, beginning, end. We gotta think of the stroke instead of like A to B, where is he, there you are is more of A to, to, to A, right? It's a loop, right? So at any point, this is the pause, right? It's A, B, A, B, A, B. There should be no point where we're thinking of this back here with our paddle behind us as the finishing or the resting point. It should always be in front, right? And we can X or recover slower, right? If we need more time, Right, a long recovery, right? If we're doing 14K, we're not gonna be up here the whole time just plugging it out. Maybe if you're a beast, all right? But most of you aren't, so we're gonna try recovering slow and staying in that loop, right? So I think your biggest thing that I'd like to see you focus on, focusing on, Bowen, is completing that loop and spending the most time up front instead of the back. So that's gonna mean you're gonna have to recover your hip a little bit sooner and you're gonna have to change your pacing up a little bit. We're watching that angle of the blade, right? And it's not getting as rotated as you'll need to, so you're just holding it for longer. So if we're able to, to, to bend that bottom arm and flick the wrist a little bit more, we're able to get a sharper angle and we're gonna have to hold it for less time. And so realistically, that's gonna be a little flick and then we're out instead of a, a drag and then a reset. <laughs> <laughs>